Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Thursday, February 1st, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. Today's show is titled, How to Steal Drugs and Sell Them. Baltimore Cop Business Plan. And you can get the show notes at isheadlines.com. On this show, cops becoming drug dealers, teamsters fight windmills, disregard surrender texts, bogo death, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your headlines you may have missed. Trial ongoing for Baltimore cops accused of stealing, selling drugs. So cops that have been assigned to take guns off the streets of Baltimore instead turned into a criminal drug gang, stealing drugs and cash from drug dealers. The cops sold the drugs and distributed the cash cool deal. Ten cops have been arrested with six pleading guilty while four more face multiple charges in criminal trials now ongoing with drug dealers called as witnesses against the cops. And yes, this is where we get the headline for the show, how to steal drugs and sell them the Baltimore cop business plan. And the story is from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, one of the officers said he was with the Federal Drug Enforcement a Administration. He was not. The officer said they had a warrant. They didn't. They didn't even know his name, though they tried to bluff, Somerville said. He's a drug dealer testifying in the trial. They ended up taking thousands of dollars out of a sock he kept in his storage unit. He testified in federal court Wednesday and left without charging him. They came at me like a gang or something said Somerville, 38. Somerville is one of several men who are admitting to being drug dealers, some of them large-scale scale traffickers under hum immunity deals with the federal government to testify against two officers with the Baltimore Police Department's Elite Gun Trace Task Force. So they were, they were sent out to take guns off the streets, and instead they stole drugs and sold them. Teamsters fight to prevent UPS from using drones, autonomous vehicles. And this is this is going to be one of the stories we're going to lead off with tonight on Is Daily Thursday, which you can watch on the Liberty Principle Facebook page live, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Lou Sander of Freedom Fiends joining me. This is going to definitely be one of the stories that we're going to go into a lot more detail on that show. So, so... Uh, the, the general gist of it is, this is from Tech Dirt. So reports are coming in, I'm reading from Tech Dirt, uh, that as the Teamsters are entering negotiations on a new contract with shipping giant UPS, their de demands include a ban on both do drone deliveries and the use of autonomous vehicles. So the fact that these Teamsters are actually attempting to get UPS to end any pursuit of utilizing these technologies, it demonstrates fundamentally that the Teamsters, they do not have a basic shared common goal with UPS, which is to continue to see UPS be competitive and profitable. And therein lies your problem. I'm, I'm not anti-union at all, but unions that divorce themselves from the necessity of the business that they're part of doing well, yeah, yeah, I have a problem with those unions. They're not actually serving the union members at all. If you drive a business into the ground, it tends to not be a good thing for the people that work for the business. And again, we're going to go into that story in a lot more detail tonight on Is Daily Thursday. Catalonia's ex-president vows to continue fight despite text messages saying it is over. Despite a series of rather pessimistic text messages, 
the exiled ex-president of Catalonia, Carles Puigdemont, is denying that he is giving up hope of still leading Catalonia. So Spanish TV, well, of course, it gleefully carried news of text Puigdemont sent that at one point actually said, it is over. And the exiled ex-president said, well, he had a moment of doubt, but the doubt is done. And as, as he texted, in quotes, we continue. So the story covered in the BBC, the headline is a little different. Catalonia's Puigdemont denies giving up after defeat text. And, and listen to their language. Now, I'm calling him exiled. And the BBC is referring to him as fugitive Catalan politician. You wonder what perspective they're writing from. Uh, so he's denied that he's giving up on leading an independent Catalonia after his private text messages were broadcast on Spanish TV. He admitted he had a moment of doubt, but insisted we continued in his text, shown by Telechinko. Telechinko, did I say that right? Telecinco? He said, it is over, and Madrid has won. But he's backing off of that, and that's good to hear. From, from my perspective, at least. Buy one, get one free? Not in France, if Bill passes. And this is another story, by the way, that it, this is actually going to be the top story. We're going to start with this story tonight on Is Daily Thursday. And uh, I know Lou has a has some things to add to this story that'll tie it into the New Deal. You'll just have to tune in tonight on the Liberty Principle Facebook page at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to hear what Lou has to say. But for now, if you like your nanny state, you're going to love France. The nanny state has recently announced its intentions to pass new regulations that would prevent food sellers from making buy one, get one free offers. Now, that regulation would be part of a larger farm bill, and it's been proposed that this move will enable retailers to, quote, trim their margins, unquote, and thus be able to pay producers better. Now, I just want you to, to sit on that, let that germinate, let the juices flow in your mind, see if any stupid juices are starting to germinate, or maybe if some smart juices are starting to combat the stupid juices and say, yo, 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 wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. Because, well, because this. Someone should tell them that when you remove the ability to make basic sales officers like, like, offers like buy one, get one free, what you might be doing there is reducing the amount of product that you're actually able to move. Funny thing is sales help move pro move product. I don't I don't know if people knew that. So if less people want to buy your product, it'll have the effect of lowering the price of your product unless of course you decide you're just not selling. And if you decide that, well, well, I mean the retailers they're they're going to end up offering the farmers lower prices for their products and the farmers can then decide if they're going to take those lower prices and not going to really have much of a choice and uh, the only other choice they'll have is is simply to get into another line of work and like i said tonight on this daily thursday that's going to be our top story and we're going to we're going to we're going to pick that puppy apart a lot more than i just did here venezuela's state crypto coin is just another crap crypto venezuela's efforts to use cryptocurrency to get around its own worthless fiat currency are meeting with the same inept management issues that plagued that fiat currency. As many predicted, the state crypto is looking more and more like just another crap corn coin. And this is from Vice. The Venezuelan government is doing an Ethereum token sale to support its new cryptocurrency. Controversy has surrounded the Petro. That's the name of the crap coin. The Petro is the crap coin. The price of which will be pegged to the value of Venezuela's oil per barrel, roughly $60 in early January, according to Reuters. Since day one, opposition leaders in a Venezuelan parliament see the currency as an illegal attempt by President Maduro to essentially get advance payment for the eventual sale of its oil reserves. 
Cryptocurrency enthusiasts, meanwhile, have argued that a centralized government creating a decentralized currency kind of defeats, well, duh, kind of defeats the purpose of the technology. Duh, 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 duh. The Petro White Paper released on Tuesday will only add fuel to the fire of criticism. Uh... Let's see here. The white paper reveals that prior to the Petro's launch, Venezuela will create a token on the Ethereum blockchain and sell it. Tokens are not cryptocurrencies like the Petro will be. They're digital assets created out of thin air and their value is only whatever people are willing to pay for them. By the way, that's it's the definition of value itself. But okay. Most token sales on Ethereum even known as uh, initial coin offerings, ICOs, are used to raise money to fund development. But the real fundraiser for Venezuela will be the public offering of Petro itself. Instead, according to the white paper, the token presale will promote and guarantee demand for the Petro Ten initial minutes. offer, which will be made later. UK gun control groups upset police taught teens gun safety. So, so if you're English, you're probably going to want to put your fingers in your ears right now and do the la 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 because I'm about ready to say something that's not going to make you happy. England, as a nation of people who have even uh, a remote sense of authentic lived out liberty, that, that England has long ago passed. Their willingness to surrender their ability to equip themselves with the basic tools of self-defense guns, well, self-defense, which those, those basic tools right now are guns, is symptomatic of the disease that is the cult of state for which England seems to have fully, completely fallen. A recent effort to attract teens to become police I mean, that, that's probably going to trigger another part of my audience, which I don't blame you. Rubbed up against this cult of state disease, a police department in Derbyshire County made the mistake of taking teens to a firing range and introducing teens to the concept of gun safety. That's terrible. That's a ter terrible, that's terrible, the terrible thing. The reaction from the community was outraged that the police had even introduced these teens to guns because only the state should have guns, don't you know? So this was the Derby Police Cadets Twitter account. Uh, the Derbyshire County Constabulary invited 13 to 18 year olds to learn what police work entails. The course included a visit to the shooting range and the UK gun group. I'm reading, by the way, from America's First Freedom.org. The UK gun group, uh, a UK gun control network said after, said, said of this, the police have no business. No business encouraging young people to develop an interest in guns. No business. None. None whatsoever. Instead, you should be teaching children that guns are scary. Unless, of course, a government hand is wrapped around the freaking trigger. EPA defers Obama water rule for two years in hopes of repealing it. This would be from the longer leash file, but let's see if it actually plays out. EPA that I'm reading here from Reuters, EPA administer and administrator Scott Pruitt said the delay of the 2015 rule that defined which small waterways can be government governed by federal regulations will reduce confusion and provide certainty to America's farmers and ranchers. The well two-year certainty, maybe. The agency is currently reviewing public comments for its 2017 proposal to rescind the rule. It is also working with the Army Corps of Engineers to develop a potential replacement rule that would revise the definition of waters of the United States. I know how to, to revise it, by the way, to, to not have a definition of the waters of the United States, because when they say United States, they're referring to the course of enterprise. That's that's it. Next headline, 3D printing artificial organs is coming. Yes, I, I wrote that on purpose. I was trying to be in being a little colloquial there. Thanks to Smart Gel.
A new smart gel could unlock the potential for 3D printed artificial organs. The gel was written about in a paper in Science Reports. And I'm reading here from Inverse.com. New research has revealed a material that can alter its shape over time in response to temperature changes, taking 3D printed objects into the fourth dimension. What's exciting here, according to the researchers at Rutgers, behind the work is that the water-based gel they used is close to a dead ringer to our own organs and tissues. It's even about 70% water, just like the human body. As the scientists explained in a paper published Tuesday in Science Reports, and that's just this past Tuesday, that could someday make the hydrogel the ideal market for 3D printing replacement body parts. Here is your moment of lulls. <coughs> Got to have a moment of lulls, otherwise, what's the freaking point of any of this? Meet your new news anchor, Robot Erica. She just goes by Erica, but I'm calling her Robot Five Erica minutes. because it's fun. Erica is all the rage in Japan's news industry, becoming a news anchor at the tender age of 23. An age she will always be, so long as she exists, because... She's a freaking robot. You get that from the title, right? Erica the Robot. Now, Sophie the Robot might be a Saudi citizen that quips jokes at the expense of South Korean presidents, but she doesn't have a real job like Erica does. So move over, Sophia. Here comes Erica. And this is from uh, LiveScience.com. By the way, I have a link to... To the uh, uh, video of Robot Erica that I encourage you to go to. You go to isheadlines.com, get these show notes. I also have the link to the show notes. They will be in the YouTube description, and they'll also be in the Facebook description. And if you're listening to this on audio, you already have access to the link to this particular story. So Erica, a lifelike android designed to look like a 23-year-old 3-year-old woman. I don't know how they came up with that by the way. How is why is that the number 23 designed to look like a 23-year-old? I don't know what that is. What's the difference between a 23, a 22, a 24? I don't get that. I don't but anyway, very particular, very finite number given there. Not a woman in her early 20s. Nope. A 23-year-old woman may soon become a TV news anchor in Japan, the Wall Street Journal reported. According to Hiroshi Ishiguro, director of the Intelligent Robotics Laboratory at Osaka University and, and also Erica's creator, the android will replace a human news anchor on the airwaves as soon as April, the Daily Mail said. So we have that to look forward to. I can't wait. Honestly, I might rather androids delivering the news rather than the news anchors that do it now. Not that I listen to the news anchors. I don't. I don't actually listen to them. But maybe I would if they were androids. Our last story here, VA bump stock ban bill dies in Senate. So more gun grabber dreams die in Virginia as yet another anti-gun, anti-human Anti-liberty gun bill dies in the Virginia legislature. This time, the bump, bump stock. Say that. Say that 12 times fast. Yes, 12 times. I'm going to be really exact. I'm going to say five. I'm not going to say many times. I'm going to say precisely 12 times. Say bump stock 12 times fast. So this time, the bump stock ban bill. Wow. Bump stock by. I can't do it. Bump stock ban bill. <laughs> if anybody else can do it just five times, Two minutes. let me know. Uh, the bump stock ban bill died in a Senate committee. We thank our masters for choosing not to tighten the leash this time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at some of the headlines that we didn't get to. FCC cuts red tape and local news broadcast industry. The local news turn of Facebook and Google. West Virginia House votes to end State Departments of Ed and Arts. Bravo! I got to clap on that one. Come on. Come on. You got to clap for that one. EU Commission soft on blockchain, hard on cryptocurrencies. 
UK University to make nanofacturing plant to build next-gen electronics. Chinese scientists 3D print artificial ears. Sophia Wiles in South Korea calls calls for respect. Respect for robots. That's boy, I really encourage you to click on that one. That's a that's a good one. Turks send air naval units to Qatar. South Korea said now these are all the headlines that I wrote. Now the rest of these headlines these are not headlines I wrote. These are just links to other stories from other news outlets. South Korea says it has no plans to shut down cryptocurrency seconds. trading. Japanese regulator reprimands coin check may conduct nationwide crypto exchange probe. Urbanists call for a non-aggression pact among cities competing for Amazon's HQ2. New York State Attorney General on why he's going after fake social media accounts. Should ISPs pay to block pirate websites? Supreme Court to decide. And you heard uh, the beeping. So you know what that means. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for February 1st, 2018. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until Monday at, well, either 12.15 or 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, depending on depending on how my experiment goes here today. This is Paul Gordon of iState saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.